Hello, my learned and astonishingly attractive peers. My name is Carly Goodlett, and I would like to welcome you to Crash Course. In no way affiliated with John Green. Chicago comedy history. Over the next couple of minutes together, we will learn how in less than 100 years, Chicago went from small comedy clubs to being home to one of the most well-known comedy training programs. You might be asking yourself, why just Chicago? Well, that is because this isn't real crash course and I don't have to follow their rules of a historical timeline, but also because we are in Chicago, the Windy City, putting on a comedy festival. We are all contributing to a fresh history of comedy in Chicago, which all started thanks to a woman named Viola Swollen. Born in Chicago in 1906 to Russian Jewish immigrants, Spolin grew up in an encouraging and accepting environment towards the arts. Spolin spent her young life creating living room dramas with her siblings and going to the opera with her father. When she graduated high school, she began studying under Neva Boyd, an early theorist of educational and social benefits of play in teaching and treating children. Boyd used folk dancing, storytelling, arts and crafts, table games, the playing of traditional European and American children's games to showcase how play creates an environment of community through creativity. Through creative acts, a child or adult is able to showcase their inner emotions outwardly. When reminiscing on her time with Boyd, Spolin said, the effects of her inspiration never left me for a single day. That's really weird because that's exactly what I said about my plastic surgeon after he took creative liberty with the first nose job. After Spolin's time with Neva Boyd, she began her training by teaching her early idea of improv games to her friends in her home she shared with her husband and two sons. Remember the sons, one of them comes in later. When she wasn't teaching her friends the joys of improv games in her living room, she was acting in productions around the Chicago area from 1931 to 1935, all the while majoring in dramatics at the DePaul Night School. <laughs> so Beep. Well, now it's later, and Viola Swollen's son, Paul Sills, has founded the Second City in 1959. While Spolin would teach her in-house classes, Paul would watch and listen. Since he was a baby, there was not a lot of participation involved, but many point to his experience with his mother's lessons as a reason why Paul grew up so interested in comedy and improv. Soon after opening, he asked his mother to host a two-week workshop on improv at the Second City. Well, these two weeks turned into a seven-year residence, <laughs> wherein Viola Spolin became the director of workshops at the Second City and wrote one of her most influential books, Improvisation for the Theater. Of Spolin's contributions to the theater, the one that has seemed to live on in acting training are her theater games. Some of you might recognize Transformations, Building a Song, Building a Story, Slow Fast, Gibberish Interpreters, Dubbing, Animals, Making Music, Entrances and Exits, the Who game, play ball, slow motion tag, kitty wants a corner, and red light, green light, question mark, but also many more. Spolin believed that everyone can act, everyone can improvise, anyone who wishes to can play in the theater and learn to become stage worthy. We learn through experience and experiencing, and no one teaches anyone anything. Talent, or lack of talent, has little to do with it. This idea of everyone having the ability to perform reflected greatly in her work with not only industry professionals, but also children and amateurs who are just interested in the art. Swollen was a great influence on the world of theater and continues to be a force that many hope to match. But enough about Swollen, let's continue on to another major influence on Chicago comedy, the Second City. As mentioned a few minutes ago, the Second City was founded in 1959 by Paul Sills, as well as David Shepard and Howard Alk. Before the Second City in 1955, David Shepard and Paul Sills led a University of Chicago Commedia dell'arte group that based many of their performances on Spolin's theater games. The influence of Spolin on the Second City permeated even before its official opening. Back to 1959, the Second City began with a cabaret theater styled comedy that leaned towards satire and commentary of current social norms, 
political figures and events. Ooh, it's time for the mystery document. And no, we related to Crash Course. Seen from the taxi on the long ride in from the airport, the place looks slower, shabbier, and in defiance of all chronology, older than New York. There was an outer London dinginess to the streets, the low buildings, the industrial plants, and the railroad crossings at grade produced the less the feeling of being in a great city than of riding through an endless succession of factory town main streets. The transition to the loop and its tall buildings was abrupt, like entering a walled city. I found it beguilingly medieval. This quote comes from a 1952 article by New Yorker writer A.J. Leibling titled Chicago, the Second City. Man, if Leibling were still alive, him and Rachel Steyer would have gone along so good. Why this document? Well, this article is the reason the Second City is called the Second City. After reading this article, the three men decided that what would be the most ultimate get back than creating one of the most famous comedy clubs and training centers named after an article that spat on their hometown. But why is the Second City so influential? Well, Second City hosts many outreach programs and tours, bringing comedy to people who otherwise would have never been involved with comedy. In 1992, they launched the Second City Outreach Program with a mission of providing new voices of color to the community, as well as an opportunity to learn at the Second City. They also began a program in 2018 in collaboration with the DePaul School of Cinematic Arts to offer undergraduate and graduate degrees in comedy filmmaking. The Second City have trained many notable alumni that have even gone on to become household names. They're most notable, at least the ones that Carly, a person not known to watch a lot of films set outside of the historical romance genre, recognize the names most of, include Ed Asner, Dan Aykroyd, Vanessa Bear, Jim Belushi, John Belushi, A.D. Bryant, Steve Carell, Bob Curry, Chris Farley, Tina Fey, Tim Meadows, Gilda Radner, Joan Rivers, Martin Short, and Jason Sudeikis. Along with their in-person influence on the art of comedy, the Second City and their alumni have also had great influence on the American public from the comfort of their own living rooms. In 1975, Saturday Night Live aired with Second City alumni John Belushi, Dan Aykroyd, and Gilda Radner as main cast members, with Bill Murray joining in the second season. In 1981, NBC aired a late-night 90-minute program called SCTV Network 90 on Fridays after Johnny Carson, which starred Second City cast members and alumni. The program went on to win an Emmy in 1982 and 1983 for outstanding writing in a variety or music program. But where are we now in our modern day Chicago history? Well, at two colleges in Chicago, one can major in comedy. At Columbia, they have the comedy writing program. And here at DePaul, we have the comedy arts program founded in 2019 by Dean Corin. But this just shows how much comedy has influenced the city of Chicago, that students are able to logically major in comedy and have a high chance of gaining a career outside of school. And this city is amazing. There are not many cities that could successfully do this. When one looks up comedy degree on Google, only three colleges pop up, two of which are in Chicago and are the ones noted above. Chicago's comedy history is newer than most entertainment paths, but there are so many household names, a notable tourist spot, and theater training programs that come directly from it that it just can't be discredited. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in rehearsal. Crash Course is produced by the team of John Green. This is in no way related to John Green or okay, Crash we Course. The, we get the bit. Like, it's happened three times. Comedy works in threes. Ha ha ha. So very funny. Okay, we get it. Thanks for watching. Bye.